Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us throughout this week. Lord, I ask uh, that you would speak through Matt, Lord, and Lord, I ask that these words would, like, that we would take this in, Lord, and and you and use it throughout the rest of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and in your name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Filippo. All right, so for this Devo, there's going to be two parts. To the Devo. One is the one that I'm going to be doing and kind of keeping some of the stuff that I feel like the Lord wanted me to share with you guys specifically. I'm going to keep that part out for at least for the recording. Then I'm going to ask Ali to stop the recording. I'll pray them out real quick. And then my second part of the Devo is going to be specifically for us because when I got this word, I knew that it was going to be specifically for us. So what I did is I kind of made it into something that I'd share with everyone, you know, like on the YouTube platform. And then I still have the one that I need to share with us specifically. Um, so the last Devo I did, I said I could share two Devos, the one I did share and then the one that I'm going to do right now. Now, the word that, I, what, that I'm doing now, I received it two years ago at camp. Um, it was a kind of like an interesting time at that point two years ago. Um, you know, there were like still people, there were people at the church that aren't there now. Um, and for obvious, they're, for obvious reasons, they've, they're gone, you know, they left, they're doing their own thing, you know, we're praying for them. But um, that word that I got was sort of just on the spirit of division and deception. And it was a word that the Lord gave me specifically for the youth back then. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm kind of just going to speak on the spirit of deception real quick. Um, you know, we already know, we can already see in our nation that the spirit of deception, the spirit of division is very apparent. You know, the enemy, and actually the Lord spoke this to me one time when I was praying over our nation. The Lord said that the enemy has somehow found a way. He's tricked the nation into believing that we are two nations instead of one nation. He's tricked the nation into believing that we are a democratic nation and a republican nation. When really we are one nation, we are one nation under God. It says it on our dollar bills. It says it on the currency, the thing that we use the most. It's on like the dollar bill. It's on every single bill, you know, in God we trust, you know. Um, we've always been one nation under God. And what the enemy did is he came in and he used the party system, the two party system just to kind of split the nation. And now you see everything that's going on. You see like the riots, the, the, all the protesting and all the, uh, even the Senate building getting stormed. You see all this division in the, in the U S and not just the division, but you also see the deception, you know, from both sides of the system. You also see deception on the Republican and uh, Democratic side. You receive, you see the deception that is being told by even the news and the media. You see it everywhere, and it's very apparent. But the thing about it is that the deception has become so obvious that we have kind of lost sight as to when we're being deceived. We've gotten so used to the fact that, you know, we're, we've gotten so used to the fact that deception is openly out there that we've lost the discernment to see that deception or to know what we're being deceived about. You know, everyone knows that we're, everyone knows that deception's there, but the thing that's, that is really going to change the way you look at things is when you ask God for eyes to see so that you can pinpoint exactly where and how you are being deceived. Now, uh, specifically, I want to speak to even just like the young people or even just the church in general, that there is deception, even in the church, there is division, even among the church, you know, the church um all the time like even with denominations we argue about our interpretations of the word of god and a lot of times we take that and we get triggered at other denominations we get triggered at other christians because they don't believe what we believe they don't believe you know or like you know with like predestination speaking in tongues all that stuff we take that and instead of coming together to figure that out instead of coming together to dive in the word and come into unison like how it was supposed to be 
we argue and we want we just want so badly to be right that we completely lose sight that we are supposed to be one body not a body that's in civil war not a body that's going to fight against each other we're supposed to be one body that's supposed to be in unison to work towards the one goal and that is to see one nate that's to see the uh, god's will here on earth you know and that's what we see throughout the church we just see division we see all of this stuff now the word that i received 2 years ago um, it was silent after that for the, from that point And like the week of that, of when I got that word two years ago, that was when it was the strongest. And then after that, like one week had passed, it was silent, silent all the way up until I got the word again, just a few days ago. And it's weird because I was kind of just praying on it. Like, Lord, why hasn't this word been sticking with me for two years? You know, why wasn't I praying on this word already for two years? If it was going to come up at this point, why wasn't I praying? Why, like, why didn't you have me remember or have me, you know, and I felt him say because the snake had been defeated then, but the snake wasn't dead, so it came back. You know, we stomped on the head of the serpent. It says in the Bible, you know, we crushed the head of the serpent. That's how God always intended it to be. But a serpent is easily able to withstand like enormous amounts of pressure. Like they can take beatings and still live. So I felt like when I was praying for that, God was saying that the snake was beaten, but he didn't die. So that's why I was able to come back. We never fully tackled that specific demon. And I feel like that's the same in our nation, even throughout all of history. Like we go, we'll go all the way back to George Washington when we were doing, or when before the two party system had even come, you know, when we had just fought for independence in seven, like in 1776, when the declaration of independence was signed and stuff, um, George Washington's scene, he had eyes to see. Now keep in mind, remember that, we are a Christian nation. We were birthed on Christianity. We were founded on Christianity. And that's why our early presidents, that's why they're some of the best presidents we've ever seen because they had eyes to see. God gave them wisdom. God gave them um, knowledge. God gave them insight. And I believe one of the biggest examples of that is George Washington. George Washington had eyes to see. George Washington had the discernment in the spirit. George Washington himself, I believe, was sent from God so that he could be the first to lead this nation. And something that when uh, we were beginning the two-party system um, with the first two parties, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, when we began that, that two-party system first, he warned against it. Now, why would that be? Because this is his reasoning for going against the two-party system because he's seen ahead of time, that he's seen the division that it would already cause. He's seen that if there were two parties, there'd be two sides and that would split the American people two separate ways. That's why he advised against it because he was for the unison of our nation and not against the division of it. But of course, us being man and in our imperfection and in our, you know, we want to be in control of that mindset. We decided we just went with the two-party system. And then there was the Federalists, the Anti-Federalists, and those were our two, first two parties. And, you know, eventually it went to Democrat and Republican. But even George Washington, he's seen that there was going to be great division if we went with that two-party system. And look at where it is leading us now. We see rioting in the streets and stuff. We've never had a more divided nation than it is now. And it's all because the enemy has come in and tricked us into believing that we are two nations when really we are one nation under God. So right now, I just advise you, ask God, you know, Lord, where am I being deceived? Lord, where am I being deceived? Where are my eyes blind to what you, you know, the truth? Where, are, where is the enemy taking my vision away from? You know, keep asking, keep, you know, like requesting from the Lord, like, God, give me those eyes to see. It says in Psalms and Proverbs, uh, all throughout David and Solomon's writings, that, Lord, I need the eyes to see, Lord, help me to seek wisdom that I may find it. You know, help me to seek um, the wisdom and discernment, Lord, that I may find it. Because once you, when you seek that wisdom, the Lord will give it to you. He will not deny the cry of someone that's, you know, genuinely hungry for wisdom and discernment. He's, you know, he's not going to deny you that. So just pray for that. Pray, ask God for the, dis, uh, the wisdom and discernment to see the division. And let me advise you something too. Um, I'm kind of going to go off from not really like on the line that I was just leading there, but something that just like that just came up right now. Um, in a church where you have like a strong youth group, like, um, like I'm gonna use for example, us, you know, we have a strong connection with each other. We've built this family together. We've grown up like these past six years of revival have been some, some of the, the best six years I've ever had because I 
fought through the pain. I fought through it in revival, not by myself, but I fought through it with all of you guys. I fought through it with, a, with you know, friends that were going to push me forward, you know, good friends that had a genuine heart for God, that had a genuine passion to seek him more. These last six years have made me grow more than I ever had before because I was moving not just by myself, but with you guys, with an army behind my back. We were fighting together and we were fighting together, but there's this one thing that happens when you make your friends your family is that it's easier for family to split. It's easier for family to argue. It's easier for family, you know, to get angry at each other. And I, come on, I know that all my people with siblings can testify to that. You know, sometimes our siblings just push out a whole new level of anger that we've like, that we never would have had otherwise, you know, like it's so easy for family to argue. And that's something that in the church, I feel like there are strong youth groups out there. I feel like there are strong youth programs out there where they, they are like a family. You know, they've grown together. They fought together. They prayed together and they've grown that bond. But the thing is, sometimes when they, the thing that's kind of tearing them down is that that's something that comes with being a family is that it's easier to argue. It's easier to fight. And people have taken that and they've let it separate them. They've, they've not even tried fought, fighting against it. Any the second something comes up, they're on it. The second something, you know, drama comes up, they are on that drama. They are on that. And, oh, you know what him, we know what he did last night. You know what she was doing over there. Like the second something like that happens, our, oh, we are holier than thou headset comes in. And it's like, oh, how, how dare you make that mistake? How dare you be imperfect? How dare you be like that? And that splits the church, that splits the youth, that splits families, you know, the drama and the, um, all the, you know, the rumors that go around, you know, when really we're all sinners, we're all, we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short of the light of God. And so why, like, why are we doing this? We are willingly tearing ourselves apart. We are willingly separating ourselves when really we should be in unison. So that's kind of the end of the first part right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pray it out the YouTube part real quick. And then Ali, you can stop the recording. Um, Lord Father God, I just pray over everyone watching this Devo that may not be on here live right now, Father God, that's watching on YouTube. God, I pray you bless them. I pray the spirit of unison over them. I pray that, God, you would fight against the spirit of division over them, Father God, over their lives, over their church, over their youth group, over, uh, God, anything that might be getting divided by the enemy, God, I come against it in Jesus' name. I, I pray, Lord, that they would crush the head of the serpent, just as you had prophesied, even in Genesis, as far back as Genesis, you said that we would crush the head of the serpent, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the deceiver was beneath our feet, Father God, that you would give us eyes to see. I pray you give them eyes to see, Father God, that they would not grow blind, that they would not grow complacent, that, God, they would not um, go down in their levels of glory, but, Father God, that they would go up, God, that they would go from glory to glory to glory, and that, God, as they grow from glory to to glory to glory that god you would continue to give them deeper levels of revelation deeper levels of insight and wisdom father god and i pray lord that whenever the enemy comes to deceive them lord that god that they would be able to see that deception before it even comes and that god that, that they would come against it god together not not just um not just um, not together, but Father God, together, that God, they are stronger together than they are separate. So Father God, I pray that they would see that and go to war against that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you want to stay tuned in for more, be sure to hit that notification bell. And also, follow us on Instagram, unshaken underscore vessels. That's all we have for today. Thank you.